Can you imagine a city without advertising? For the residents of Sao Paulo, this doesn't need imagination. A city of 11 million inhabitants stripped off all its advertising in September 2006. The Clean City Law passed, and 15,000 billboards cluttering the world's seventh largest city were taken down. This happened despite the critics were worried about the revenue loss of $133 million and the loss of 20,000 jobs. The city continues to exist, and 70% of citizens found the advertising ban beneficial. Now, can you imagine internet without advertising? YouTube without ads. <laughs> Old good days. <laughs> How we ended in this noisy digital world? We're living in the information overload era. It's a digital world. We're still using this in a very manual way. We spend hours to search, to read reviews, compare prices until we shop online, and we leave our digital footprints everywhere during this buying, shopping, reading process. Look at this. This shows the advertising landscape. All these different technologies emerged just during the recent years only to connect marketers to consumers. The advertising industry is blooming thanks to our digital footprints, our personal data. Yes, our personal data has found tremendous value. It is any information that can say something about us somehow. Our name, our age, location, email address, phone number, what we do online, what we're sharing with our friends, what we're searching for, anything, literally, even our mouse movement. But what is the relationship between our personal data and advertising industry there? Even before you click, you touch the screen. Your data is shared with many parties. Ad servers, ad exchanges, demand-side platforms, supply-side platforms. Everyone wants to know what you're interested in and how much your attention is worth. Your attention is put up for auction. The ad from the winner of the bidding is shown to you together with the content you're looking for. And all this happens in a fraction of a second. Don't get me wrong, I'm not against sharing data. But what is particularly awkward here is that our data is traded without us noticing. It's our click, our touch on the screen that generates money out of thin air. If it's so much value with our data, why we don't get paid for it? We have no control. I spent years at university doing research on how we can model humans' digital behavior online by, collect by collecting and tracking their personal data. My research was useful for the so-called personalization solutions, like movie recommendations on Netflix, product recommendations on Amazon. I was passionate about this. This could help us building a better digital world. We could find the information we need much effortlessly. Or even better than that, information can come and find us in the right time and right place. Isn't that exciting? I joined industry later, worked as a data scientist. I even started my own company, building personalization as a product. But as we worked harder, we realized that building a Ideal personalization solution is far from reality. Users are becoming more aware of protecting their data. They use ad blockers. And without good data, our algorithms couldn't work properly. We ended up with creating even more noise. Advertisements following users everywhere. They were irrelevant, out of context. 
This was nothing that I could be passionate about anymore. I quit my job. I started working on a new idea. This time, I wanted to put myself on the side of users, not advertisers, marketers, or businesses. Let's change this game. How the ideal world for us could be? It's a digital world. We need digital means to deal with this digital world. We need personal agents to work on behalf of us, to take all the hassle of finding information, and to connect to marketers or whoever has something to offer to us, to remove the need for middlemen such as advertisers. What if we can put all our intentions to buy a product or a service in one shopping basket, which is ours? Our data could be our currency. What if, as customers, we don't have to be acquired, maintained, become loyal to anyone, but businesses become loyal to us by providing better and better products and services? How this could be possible? I would love to tell you with, the, with an example. Imagine traveling. Our planning for a trip often starts with search, isn't it? What are the flights out there? Is there any good deal for me? Our plan for a trip should start with us having an intention to travel to a specific location, within a budget, in a timeline, related to our hobbies, interests. And we can put this intention up for auction. Airlines can come and bid for us to get us as a customer, offering better and better deals. Isn't this a win-win game for airlines and travelers. As a traveler, I get access to deals that exist only for me. It's not out there. It's for me because of the value of my personal data. I can take care of my data, control it, my frequent flyer data, trade it everywhere based on what I want to get. It's a win for airlines. They used to fight for our attention before by spending huge amount of money on advertising campaigns. Now they get direct access to our intention for traveling. Our intention is worth much more than an attention. They get direct access to real-time market demand. It's a win for travelers, win for airlines, and it's a lose for anyone in between, such as advertisers. Our data has a value, it has a power. It should be for us, our personal power. But it doesn't have to stop here. We have also power as a social group. If I share my intention to travel with my friends, colleagues, co-workers, they can join my int intention. And as a social group, we will have even more bargaining power. It can even get better than this. All of us, right now, decide to go to Alaska. Isn't that a strong market signal for the airlines to consider? We can put our intentions together and gain even more power as a crowd. The advertising ban in Sao Paulo reminds us that once we lost control on our bigger home, our city, it was possible to get back control and filter out the noise. The story of beautiful Sao Paulo reminds us that it, this can be beginning of an end. We can move over our fears of the world without advertising, and it can get better. Same is happening in our digital world. We lost control on our personal data. Our world is filled up with noise. We're not against advertising. We're against annoying ads, irrelevant ads, following us everywhere, out of context. We're against our data become the fuel to advertising industry without us getting paid for it. Remember, your attention is worth a lot. Your intention is even worth more. Your data is your currency. You should get control back on it. Thank you very much.